Hello there, Kyle Katarn here, continuing my work on the R2-D2 build-up model from Fanhome. Assembly is well underway, and when I have completed construction, I will have a fully armed and operational battle station. Well, actually, it's going to be a one-half scale R2-D2 model um, with a functional movable camera, lights, and aut autonomous mode. I mean, and you can control the entire thing manually from an app on a smartphone, which is awesome. But first, we have to build it, so let's keep going. If you want to check out the previous assembly stages, you will find a playlist of this entire build on my YouTube channel. All right, let's continue. So this package actually contained quite a lot. We've got issue number seven, eight, nine, and 10, and a whole lot of parts involved. And judging by how much curves there are in all of these, I'm guessing a lot of this is gonna focus on R2's dome today. But the coolest thing that came in this package is this awesome R2-D2 poster. Check that out. Yeah, this is really cool. See you right there, courtesy of Fan Home. All right, let's get building. So upon closer inspection, this poster is even cooler than I thought because it's not a poster at all. It is a booklet containing massive, awesome art prints of the droids. We've got a McQuarrie up in here. I love this one, look at that. This is such a treat, I was not expecting these at all. So, yeah, this definitely sweetens the pot quite a lot. Look at these awesome, these are going right up on the wall. Yeah, these art prints, super awesome. I was wondering why the box was absolutely massive, it's because of the size of this thing. You know, all the components packages are, are fairly small, and the magazines are very small compared to them too. All right, issue number seven. Building R2, we're gonna be continuing the chassis for R2-D2's head. Um, we're gonna get a look inside the Star Wars stunt team. That's pretty cool. And then for the droid directory, we're going to the LOM series protocol droids. Uh, the most famous that comes to mind for me being four LOM of bounty hunting fame. The Star Wars stunt team. Oh, yep, without even reading it, I know that that's Peter Diamond right there. I'd know that mustache anywhere in the galaxy. This is very cool. I want to read all of this in depth later, learning about the various stunts. Um, stunts have come a long way, you know, both technologically and also just physically, of the things that they did back then. A lot of times you can't get away with now, because it was very dangerous. The LOM series, also made by Industrial Automaton. Very cool. With the insectoid head. Distinctly organic in design, dominated with the large compound photoreceptor eyes. Vocabulator is mounted on the nose of the droid, while dual auditory sensors, allowing easy location of a sound source, were set below. Yeah, four Lom, and then of course we also got um, Zero in The Mandalorian. He was a great addition as well. This is very cool. Artificial assistance. Okay, so now we're learning a little bit about robots, AIs, automatons in general, which I think is very cool. Okay, and now we come to it. Stage seven. The head frame and leg components. Okay, there were some loose screws in that. That's living on the edge. Okay, components checklist. Let's take a look here, shall we? Two dome frame pieces right here. Got some fixing nuts. Um, some leg details. Some more leg details. And a couple little hinges in here for the dome. Dome frame hinges. Two fixing screws. And a partridge in a pear tree. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so first, okay, so step one, we're gonna take those two uh, dome frames that just came with this, along with the assembly that we constructed here in stage five, and four of those little silver screws that we uh, used in stage five to fix this piece of the dome frame onto this plate right here. Okay, so now we're gonna take our assembly from stage five, and we're gonna position one of those dome frames right next to it, lining up these little screw holes with the holes on the metal itself, right there. Okay, so we're gonna take one of the fixing nuts and we're gonna place it into this little hexagonal recess. It's fitted right there into the plastic. There we go. Now holding the nut in place with a fingertip like that, we're gonna flip it over and insert one of the silver screws. 
Now that is in place. Look at that. It's not going anywhere. Okay. Now that this is in place, we're going to repeat steps three and four with another nut in the other hexagonal recess that we've got here. And Gonk's your uncle. Almost got a dome assembly. Like, it's already starting to resemble that iconic uh, curve of his head, you know? Like, R2-D2 is one of those robots that has an iconic silhouette. And even if you could only see his outline, you would know exactly what you're looking at. Which, in my, in my view, is the hallmark of a good design. So now we're going to take the other dome framing, and we're going to stick it on the other side, and we're just going to repeat steps three and four with both of these two. And from here, you sort of start to get a sense of the scale of just how big one half scale is going to be. Look at this. This is the top of the dome. It shows you how big around it's going to be, right? All right, and now the framework extends halfway around the top of R2-D2's head. Uh, we're going to be adding more sections in the following stages. Okay, now we're switching gears and we're working on R2-D2's right ankle fitting. We're going to take all six of the metal casings and two of the screws that were supplied this time around. You're going to take one of these flat silver rings and fit it over the stepped end of this part, like so. Then you're going to press this part right here into the end of the assembly, making sure that these notches on the inside line up with the notches here on the exterior. Once that's in, you'll have something that resembles this. Holding the assembly together, you want to turn it around to expose this hole in the middle, and then using the magnetic tip of the screwdriver, you want to insert a screw into that hole. Alright, and then you simply repeat those steps with the other components that you have here, until you have two matching little assemblies. And then you'll see how to attach them in the next stage. Alright, step number eight. We're going to be continuing R2-D2's head frame and the ankle components. We're gonna get a look inside the weapon of a Jedi. It sounds to me like some lightsaber business. And droid directory, this time we're getting the Imperial Mark IV Century droid. You'll love to see it. Awesome, we've got some of Ralph McQuarrie's earliest sketches of a lightsaber back here. This is great, talking about the evolution of the style throughout the ages, how it was originally heavily inspired by Kendo Ka, and then later on, um, you know, more by like swashbuckling films. The Mark IV Sentry Droid was not originally in Episode Four. It was added in the in the special edition re-releases back in 1997. Um, however, I would I think most people would agree that it was a positive addition because it's a great droid. Humanoid robots. Oh, I remember this guy. I'm old enough to remember watching him do his little dance that took the world by storm. Robot technology. Automatons. Uh, this is a still from Fritz Lang's Metropolis, which was another um, early inspiration for C-3PO. Uh, Ralph McQuarrie talked about taking inspiration from that a lot. Stage number eight, head frame and ankle components. All right. We have a right ankle detail. Some ring frames right here. Very interesting. Uh, a ring frame connector right here. A dome frame and another dome frame. This one kind of gives away the game. You can tell from the it, from the circular cavity that this is going to involve the ocular implant. This the process state indicator that we built several stages earlier. Cool. Okay, so we're going to start by taking our dome assembly from issue number seven. Um, our two new dome frame pieces that we just got, and you guessed it, more nuts and screws. Okay, so we're going to position DF02, as shown here, to the right side of the rest of the dome assembly. And we're going to be using nuts and screws in these hexagonal recesses to hold it into place. Flip her over. We all know the drill by now, right? It's funny to think about it. Is this what Babu Frick does every day? Just sit around making droids, you know? It's pretty nice. Alright, look at that. If that's not recognizable, I don't know what it is. Oh, forgive me, this is not part of the ocular implant, not at all. This is the secret compartment where R2-D2 fires his lightsaber out of to save Luke, remember? Hell yeah. Okay, so once we've got this nice and secured, we're going to continue with the next dome frame piece, right next to where we just put that one. So, repeat the process from steps two and three. More hexagonal fixing screws, follow... More hexagonal fixing nuts, followed by more screws. Yeah, there we go. 
Who needs Adam Driver when you've got a screwdriver? It would appear that my jokes are only getting worse from here. Look at this. The top of the framework is now almost complete. Uh, I'm going to be closing that gap in the circle during the following stage. Okay, and now we begin the top ring. So we're going to be fitting both of these ring frames together with a ring frame connector. You guessed it. So this is the ring frame. These two pieces up here are going to connect from a little notch right there. And then you're going to take the ring frame connector and you're going to fit it over the top like that. So now it's in place. All right, you're going to want to flip this over and use a screw to hold it into place. And once we've got two screws in there, our dome frame is connected. It is as one. And this finishes the job for now. Uh, we are going to complete the circle and attach it to the top frames in the next stage. All right. And now moving along to R2-D2's right ankle fitting. We've got this nice little blue piece and these two pieces that we assembled from stage seven right here. You will notice there are five flanges inside the metal piece here. You want to align those with the side of here, just like this. And there you go. I'm going to fit the other metal casing on the other end, just like this. So we're going to take our leg assembly that we've made here and we're going to attach the ankle fitting right into here. That's how that's going to fit. All right, so here's our right ankle plate. We're going to take this fitting that we just created. You want to align these holes with the studs coming out right here in the assembly well. And it should look just like that. And when you flip it over, it should all line up perfectly in there. Okay, once we flipped it over, we're going to take some of these little black screws that were provided in issue number seven and fit them into the holes in the back here. Once those are in place, your ankle fitting is, the ankle detail is attached. To see the finished effect, um, reattach it to the right leg assembly that we've created earlier. Um, it won't be permanently fitted on there until a later stage, but there you go. Look at that, looking pretty good. And that completes step number eight. All right, issue number nine. Uh, we're continuing the head chassis and the rear holographic projector. Ooh, that sounds fancy. A look inside Star Wars, creating a used galaxy. And Droid Directory, CZ Series, Secretary Droids. Awesome. Yeah, these magazines are always full of such cool behind-the-scenes info, you know? Servo Droid Inc. Okay, we've got another in independent manufacturer that's not Industrial manuf Automaton or Zerka somehow. Interesting, we get a little bit of a breakdown in ABS plastic, which is what a lot of uh, this dome frame is made out of. A lot of the plastic components are made out of this. And here we go. Head frame projector and rear projector parts. Okay, components checklist. We've got a dome frame. We've got a projector mount. A projector pivot. Projector lens. Another ring frame. Uh, we've got the projector another piece of the projector here, and more connectors. So this seems, I think I know where we're headed here. All right, step one, extending the chassis. We're gonna take our ring frame and we're gonna be completing the bottom half using these two connectors. We're gonna be using the dovetail, the dovetail joints here on the ends and fitting them into place like this. Just sliding in there on that one. Okay, so that we're nice and flush on the edges. And then we just cradle them with these connector pieces. Boom and boom. The instructions tell you to do it one screw at a time and then repeats the process. But I am just going to be a little bit more efficiently minded here and connect them all at once. When putting in multiple screws, I try to uh, do opposite sides, which allows you to manipulate the object without it falling apart a little bit easier. You know? And we've successfully extended the dome frame. Uh, this completes the upper ring, which will form the base of the top third of the framework. Speaking of the framework, we're going to take that framework from stage eight, and we're going to fit this final piece of the dome plating into that missing gap right there. 
and we're going to be repeating our previous steps using a hexagonal fixing nuts and some short silver screws. Okay, so now the framework is completely populated with the frames. There's nothing missing. You'll notice there's still a little gap here in the front. We're going to take the dome ring and we're going to align that gap in the front with one of these round edges right here. You'll know that you've lined it up because the connectors will align with these little flat plastic sides that don't have any screw holes on them all the way around. Once you've aligned the framework with the top ring, um, press the framework into place, making sure that all the locating pins on the frames fit their holes on the top ring like that. Okay, so now we begin to affix the top dome to the frame. We're going to put a hexagonal nut into that plastic recess there, flip it over, and we all know this process by now. We're throwing screws up in there. So, here we go. Once we've started with the first nut, we simply continue along the way, and we're going to add all 12 nuts in sequence until eventually the entire thing is connected. That's shit. Alright, last one going in. All right, all 12 fittings are in place and the top of the framework is now complete. Uh, we're going to start extending the dome downwards in the following stages. Okay, now we're doing R2-D2's rear holographic projector. So we're going to take the four parts of the projector supplied in this stage and two of the little black screws. We're going to take the clear lens right here and we're going to fit it into the projector shell like this. Okay, you want to make sure that it fits in flush with the surround, which it does here. We're going to fit the assembly into the projector pivot next. And the whole thing just works like a great big Ru N Russian nesting doll, you know? And it's actually just a little bit articulatable inside there. Cool. The assembly should fit right inside, just as you see here. Now we're going to take this projector mount, and you see how you've got these two screw holes in there? We want to make sure that they line up with the inner circles right here. So, there we go. That's on the mark. Okay, using the magnetic screwdriver, we're going to pick up one of these screws, and we're going to fit it into that really deep hole. Here we go. To the planet core. All right, and once those are all stacked in there, that completes the assembly of R2-D2's rear projector lens. So now we have a completed upper dome assembly and a rear holographic projector. And that's it for step number nine. All right, step number 10. We're in the double digits now. We're gonna be building the head frame and the lens assembly. Look at that. Uh, then we're gonna get a deep dive into the visual effects of Star Wars and this time on Droid Directory, the WED Treadwell Droid series, unofficially known as Wally Droid. This is awesome. What I would give to be able to be on the soundstage when they were shooting these models, how awesome would that be? Treadwell Droid, developed for the Galactic Republic before the Clone Wars. These versatile practical droids can be put to so many uses that after the conflict, abandoned or surplus examples appeared, appeared all over the galaxy. Indeed, they had a couple on the Lars homestead as well. Learn about robot arms and robot articulation, leading us to the build. Head frame, lens, and leg parts. Let's do our checklist. All right, and Stage 10's components are gonna consist of a camera lens mount, a dome frame, and a front and rear right leg frame. All right, we're gonna start by taking our completed assembly from stage nine, uh, the new frame, and two more of those silver screws and nuts that we used in the earlier frame. So we're gonna to wanna to position it as shown. We want these two to be vertical at the bottom, and we want our little circular hole, which is kind of the only landmark on this otherwise symmetrical device, to be off center, facing up that way. And we're going to attach it, coming up from underneath, right into this spot right here. So to flip that over to give you an idea of where it's going, you have these holes up here. It's going in the outer two. Okay, so we're going to take a we're going to take one of these fixing nuts and stick it right into that hexagonal recess. It's kind of hard to tell uh, because it's smooth on the ends, but this far end actually is hexagonal in shape. So it's going to fit in there right like that. 
Once you got the screw in there, you're going to repeat steps four and five to put another screw in the opposite corresponding hole there. So, get that fixing nut nice and snug. Hold it in place. And boom. All right, and that finishes the framework for now. You're going to be extending this over the next couple stages. All right, so now we are assembling the lens. Remember this lens from way back in issue number one? We're going to be using this. We're going to be using the mounting device and the lens itself, along with four little self-tapping screws. Okay, so we're going to take this lens right here, remove the plat. If you haven't already removed the protective plastic, now's the good time to do it. Um, and then we're going to be placing it inside here, making sure that it is curved upwards and seated nicely right there. All right, the lens has been placed. Oh, hey, you can see me in there. That's cool. Okay, so if you flip the lens cap over, you will notice that there are four screw holes that correspond with the four corners of this mounting bracket. So what we do next should be fairly obvious. We're going to place them over the tops like this, being very careful not to actually interact with the lens itself because we don't want to scratch it. I say as I like crank it a little bit. Jesus. Okay. Once you get that to snap in place, you want to turn it over. Put four little self-tapping screws into these holes. Just to kind of seal the deal. Because you want that lens to be nice and snug in there. Alrighty. And with this fourth and final screw in place, that completes uh, the lens assembly for today. Look at that. That's a very recognizable piece of R2-D2, if I say so myself. So that completes the job for now, but as you can see from this, um, it's going to be fitting on to this lower section of the dome. And uh, our droid is really starting to take shape here. What's going to happen is you see these plastic tabs on the top and the bottom here. You see these plastic tabs at the top and the bottom here? They are going to slide into here and here, and it's going to work as a sort of a sliding open mechanism to allow you to lock it into place or to remove it to gain access to that camera lens if you need to. Um, but that'll all be happening in following stages. And that's it for stage number 10. Uh, we've extended our head chassis and began work on the lower part of the framework, and we have fully encapsulated our lens, ready to add it when the time is right. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for the next video containing the following assembly stages. I've added a link in the description of this video to the Fan Home website where you can pick up an R2-D2 build-up model of your own, complete with a promo code that'll give you a discount. Thanks again, and as always, may the Force be with you.